Well, YouTube really has to think about this. All right, go live. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we have gone live. All right, everything looks good. And right now there's nobody on channel. Not surprising. I just uh, did this impromptu thing here. I had a question, so uh, a question from one of my patrons, and I thought I'd answer it this way. So, hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. My name is Rich Charpentier, and normally on this channel, we do a lot of drone talk and 360 images, and also building your small drone or imaging business. So that seems to be the biggest part. And I got a question emailed me, emailed me today. I can't talk. <laughs> I have a question that was emailed to me today. There we go, I can get that out. And I decided, hey, let's do an impromptu live stream to answer the question. So one of the folks over on my Patreon channel um, had asked about uh, nadir, uh, nadir patches for 360 images. So he had a couple questions and he was trying out Affinity Photo. So I decided, hey, let's go ahead and answer that question. Um, by using Affinity Photo. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got my OBS screen up here. I'm just making sure that the audio and everything's working good. And I'm going to double check one more time on the live stream window here. And yes, it's everything's looking okay. No complaints and uh, not telling me we're dropping frames or anything. So I see one person joined. Thanks for joining up. Like I said, this is a very impromptu video today. And so I'm just going to take a look over at the question over here. So I'm just rolling off screen for a sec. Um, so this person from my Patreon channel asked about uh, how to replace the nadir of a panorama with a text logo or also brushing some things out. So um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, hey, from Down Under, how you doing today? Thanks for stopping into the channel. So we're doing a little bit with a 360 image here for one of my patrons who wanted uh, wanted an explanation of a couple of things in Affinity Photo. The first thing that we're going to do here, so we're in Affinity Photo and we've got a 360 image um, testing in my living room from the other week. And we want to actually put uh, a nadir patch down here or we want to clean up what's in the image. So number one, one of the things I like about Affinity Photo is their live projection. Um, that live projection is a really easy way to get a look at how your 360 has turned out. So I'm going up to the layer and I'm going to select an equirectangular projection here. So now we can see how our 360 looks. And so one of the big questions usually is getting rid of your monopod or tripod, or if you're using, let's say, a digital SLR for doing your 360s, you're probably doing the full 360, you're probably shooting up, but oftentimes you don't shoot the floor and that's okay. Um, so once we're into the uh, equirectangular projection, we see my monopod base right down here. Maybe we wanna get rid of that. We don't like that in here. And Affinity Photo makes this really easy to achieve. Over on the left-hand side, I'm just, uh, let's zoom in there. So I'm pointing at this little paintbrush. This is the in-painting brush tool. So what does the in-painting brush tool do for us? Let's go ahead and select it here. And I'm just going to very simply and easily brush that away. And there we go. We can see that there's a little bit of a, just a slight problem here on the floor panels, but quite honestly, I don't think people are going to um, refocus down to, uh, <laughs> to you know check really close about how the uh, floor area looks. So once we've done that, I'm just gonna go back up and get my arrow tool. And that arrow tool, there's the move tool right there. So I'm just selecting that. I'm gonna zoom back out of it. Because at the moment, we're not in the live projection now. We're at part of the scene for doing that editing. So what I'm gonna do up here, let's uh, go ahead and pick that again. And we've got that edit live projection. And now that we're back into the edit live projection, we can move ourselves around again. So that in-painting brush really works well. And let's say that you've got some issues in the 360 that you're working with. Um, let's pretend that all these power outlets are actually problems in the image. If I just go grab that in-painting brush tool again, I'm just gonna brush right there. 
and I'm gonna brush right there. Now we have no light switches and we have no power and we have no fan control here either. So very quickly, very easily, we can patch things and remove things um, super, super simply. I'm gonna go back up to that uh, upper left corner again. I'm gonna select the move tool one more time, okay? So now that I've selected the move tool, up on this top bar, we have the edit live projection again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And let's actually zoom ourselves back out. So now I can pan around this room again. So if there's other things like right here in this little corner, um, I think that I had actually left one of my Velcro, uh, Velcro straps for one of my backpacks. So I could go in with that in painting brush tool again and just paint that right out. Let's go ahead and remove that. And sure enough, that's been removed. And since, uh, since we're at it, let's just get rid of that power outlet as well. Uh, a little dot still remain there. Once again, once I'm done, I'm going to grab the move tool. I'm turning the live projection back on so that I can look around the room again. So there we go. That's one way to get rid of the monopod and tripod footprints on your 360s. I'm gonna go up to the top, I'm going up to layer, I'm going down to layer uh, live projection, and we're gonna turn that projection off now. And so here's the whole 360 image that we normally see before we upload it somewhere. And as you can see, we've wiped out uh, several power outlets. We've wiped out our, um, our uh, fan control. And uh, we also got rid of that uh, um, one more power outlet here. And then also the little zip tie thing that I had down there, the Velcro thing. So there we go. Now, the second part of the patron's question was actually creating a nader patch. So doing this is actually pretty easy. Normally I do this in Photoshop, so I'm not a huge Affinity user yet. I am learning a lot about it. One of the big reasons I got Affinity Photo was that live projection so that I could actually get a really great look at my 360s before they get uploaded uh, to anywhere in the world. I'm just checking one more time here. All right, we're gonna minimize that again. So the next step, in answer to his question is, let's make that nader patch, okay? So over here on the left-hand side, again, we have all of our tools in Affinity Photo. Kind of feels familiar in like Photoshop, doesn't it? So when we're doing 360s and we're using a DSLR on a big tripod, um, oftentimes people will not shoot the floor. So that's why you need the nader patch. And that patch is pretty easy to do here. So over on the left-hand side, Zooming in, I'm using the rectangle tool right there. So I'm just gonna grab the rectangle tool and we're gonna make a little rectangle. So if it were the case that I uh, used the DSLR and I had that big footprint there, I could cover that over because we're gonna see that on screen. So now I've got the patch already done. So we've got what's going to amount to a white circle and let's take a look at that. So we're gonna go up to layer. Oh, and I can't do the live projection because right now I need to merge these two layers first. So we're going to merge these selected layers into one. There we go. So now over here on the right hand side under my layers panel, I've only got one layer here. And if I go look at the live projection now, let's check this out. So let's just look down. And we made a little circle patch and somebody didn't drag the, um, <laughs> didn't drag the uh, rectangle all the way to the edge. That'd be me. So whoops on that one. Let's get out of the live projection really quick. So remove that. And we still have that patched area. And actually what I'm gonna do, let's go undo, undo, and let's undo that merge selected. So now if we look back over, we have two layers. We have a rectangle layer and we have a background layer. So I'm gonna zoom that back out. So the next step for me to actually put a label down here, maybe you wanna advertise your business and this is a great way to do it. So over on the left-hand side, there's a little A key right here. Let's zoom that in. So there's our artistic text tool, awesome. So I'm gonna zoom that back out here and let's also change whoops did not want to do that edit and undo set fill 
See, like I said, not a regular affinity user, but sometimes it's kind of fun to work through these things together. So I have my um, artistic tool here, the brush tool, and I'm just putting in my lettering. So we could do azdrone.net for our advertising and also rlcdesign.net. And maybe we'd like to put a couple of spaces between these. Now this is not going to be perfect and you're gonna see that momentarily. And this is also purposefully not perfect. I'm actually going to squish this in a little bit and you're gonna see why this isn't exactly what we wanted. So over on the right hand side, we now have three layers up here. We have our text layer, we have our rectangle layer, and we've got the background layer. Before I do that, um, before we do the live projection, you'll notice when I come down to the live projection on layers, nothing is lit up for me right now. So it doesn't want to uh, make that projection at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is select those three layers again. I'm gonna go up to layer and I'm gonna merge the selected into one layer because that's gonna be the last step when we make these. Now that it's a single layer, we can go back up to our live projection and there we go, we can launch it now. And let's go look down at the floor. So this is looking a little better, but the spacing between the letters is not fantastic on this at the moment. So we can go into the character pane for Affinity Photo and we can add additional spacing to whatever we put down there. Number one, we don't have to put logos down here. You don't have to do that at all. You could just put that rectangle down at the bottom and the rectangle gets turned into a circle when we're all said and done here. Let's go ahead and hop out of this layer again. Actually, we can just, let's go ahead and undo and uh, undo again. And we're just taking a look and yep, we're still, uh, we've still got that projection down there at the bottom. So let's live projection, remove the projection. There we go. And now we're back to where we started. So the problem that I was having here with this one is that um, the spacing between our letters is not perfect at all, not even close. So what can we do about that? Well, there is an entire character pane here. So I'm just pulling this out here. And when you're making that Nader patch for yourself, you're going to want to do spacing that actually covers across the entire patch. So rather than building a giant patch here, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to use the uh, text tool there. Rather than building the entire patch here together, I'm just minimizing a couple of windows for a moment and I'm going into my web media and buttons. So I keep a lot of uh, reusable things for both um, live streams and for my editing. I always have a folder of these little junk items that I can use. But so let's just double click on this one. So here is a, another Nader patch that we've used before. And so I could bring that into the image and let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna pop this back up. I'm gonna close that character panel. And um, let's see here, what would I like to do? I'm gonna minimize that and I'm gonna drag this one right on top of Affinity Photo. So now we have two different layers here. I'm just gonna pull this one out. Whoops. Let me open this up a little bit, get back to our, there we go. And now I'm just gonna drag this one in here. So this is the one that we had already pre-made in Lightroom not too long ago. I'm gonna drag this across the screen for us. And also you can see, let's go ahead and pull that up a little bit more. So there we go. Now we have our new Nader patch on here and I'm just gonna click on this and let's select, let me close this window up again for you. So let's select those two layers and now that they're selected, whoops, I unselected them. Let's go down really quickly and let's merge selected. And now we have this single image once again. Let's go up to our layer and live projection again. And so I just create this file one time 
and then I can reuse it over and over again. And as you can see, there's still this little white line here, so I didn't drag it right up to the edges of those images. So I should set up a little snap to grid for myself on Affinity. But as I said earlier, I'm still a relatively new user to Affinity in comparison to uh, Photoshop. So much, uh, much more comfortable with Photoshop sometimes, but I am improving with Affinity and will continue to do so because it's been very useful um, for all of these 360s. So there we go. This is a pretty quick live stream. Let me pop this back up just to double check. And um, so I don't know if my patron got to pop by here today or not, but uh, in, answer to his, um, in answer to his question, here we go. So once again, let's close this one down. Actually, let's close both of these up. Oh, did not mean to do that. Let's close that window, don't save, and close that window, don't save as well. Let's go back down to our YouTube to make sure, okay, we're good. I, um, I had actually accidentally closed up the chat window over here. And let's just pull that chat window back down. So getting to see some of the behind the scenes thing for when you uh, set up OBS and these things. Let's play with one more image, shall we? So I'm just going to go over to that. Uh, let's go to the desktop here and let's go find another web ready panel. And let's see what this one is. All right. So different room in here. Let's do something. Ah, oh, that is property that I just flew the other day. There we go, that's a new one that nobody's seen before. I'm gonna drag this image right down onto Affinity Photo. So there's Affinity Photo for us one more time. And in the case of this one, we were dealing with a lot of shadows. I was actually doing some testing with the Ricoh Theta Z1's Time Shift uh, plugin, which is a really interesting plugin. Um, it does have a couple of problems with it, like on a bright sunny day, if you've got long shadows, they're going to be coming through. And you yourself can become a long shadow, even though you're hanging out of the majority of the image. In the case of this one, if you look right down here, you will see half of my shadow. That's my head. I'm looking down and I'm looking down at my iPhone as I'm getting the image. So yuck, I don't, I don't want me in there. So number one, I'm going to go ahead and grab that in painting brush again. So once again, over on the left hand panel in painting brush, I'm just going to click on that and let's go get rid of my shadow at least. So there we go. We've removed my shadow, but we have not removed. This is the monopod shadow. So this is kind of ridiculous um, how much shadow it's casting there, but it was time of day. So that'll happen now. Painting out the whole monopod, not sure if we're going to be able to because we've got that whole shadow going on. But let's go up to our layer really quick, projection, the equirectangular projection one more time. And let's bring ourselves down here. So yeah, okay, that's not the monopod. Good. <laughs> that's a light post. But we do have the monopod right here and I did line it up in the light post shadow, just trying to minimize my own shadows. Once again, I can get that in painting tool brush or in painting brush there and we can remove that monopod and there it goes. Very nice, very easy to uh, remove the monopod. I'm going to go grab the arrow key in the upper left again. We'll go back to the edit live projection. There we go. So we can actually have a look around this and you can see where the sun is. So that's why we've got those huge long shadows. Up under layer, I'm going to go ahead and remove the projection so that we're back to the typical 360 that we're not looking at in a viewer. Now I'm going to go ahead and minimize the chat window here and let's go back to our media buttons. And there we go. There's that AZ drone. I'm going to just drag that on as a new layer for affinity photo again. And let's bring this down to the bottom. There we go. Let's make sure that uh, we're not we're not neglecting that because we had a little bit of that show through. Whoa, that went way too far for me. Now that we have that selected, I'm going to just click outside of the box and I can see a little white line down here at the bottom. So maybe I'll drag that down just a bit to make sure that's not showing up in the final image. Now in the upper 
in the upper right corner. Let's pop this one up again. But here we go. Upper right corner, we have our layers palette. And you can pull these palettes out if you want to, just like Photoshop. But we have two layers at the moment. And so I just selected both of them. We're going to go over to our layer again. We're going to merge selected once more. And now we have the single image. And when we go to that live projection again, accurate rectangular projection, let's go ahead and look down at the ground. There we go, the azdrone.net, and that's looking pretty good. So one of the things you're gonna have to do when you start setting up your nader patches, um, you're gonna have to figure out how much you wanna space your letters apart. I would suggest they encompass the entire rectangle down there so that you don't have some big spacing because what happens with these sometimes is the letters will get squashed together. So that's also where you can go into your character palette and you can add a diff, additional um, distancing between each of the letters that you're typing out. So there we go. So all right to my patron, I don't think uh, I don't think you're on channel right now, but I did drop you a note so you can come back and rewatch this one later. And I just figured I'd share this quickie one with everybody else because I had a few minutes to do it. So. If you like this particular uh, fast live stream, go ahead and hit uh, like and subscribe down below. And we do regular live streams every Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And for the folks over on our Patreon channel, we're now doing two Zoom conferences a month. So every other Sunday, um, also at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And as we have time, we do other videos here on Photoshop, on Lightroom, on drone flight, on mapping and modeling, and many other things. So go ahead and take a look back at our channel's history, and you'll see all the different types of videos that are appearing here. So everybody, thanks for stopping in. I know that we've had a couple people on stream, so I hope that was fun for you, and I hope you learned a little something on this one. And um, now I'll be dropping another note back to the, to the patron to let them know, hey, you've got your own video answer up here uh, on YouTube now. So I hope you have a great rest of the day and enjoy your week. And we'll see everybody again really soon at the latest on, um, on next Mondays. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, and thanks for joining in. Glad to meet you. And uh, we'll look forward to you on other live streams. I know you said uh, hello from down under before. So I know the uh, time zones and everything between Pacific Coast, US and Australia big time gaps. So normally when we're on, you're, you're probably just wrapping up your day. So, all right, have an awesome rest of the week and we'll see everybody again real soon.